welcome to our last number seven out of seven academic advising workshops. Today we're going to be talking about WebCT and converting to Blackboard or for new people who've never used WebCT, creating your own Blackboard site with our panel of experts. We have Marcy Perry joining us, uh, Mary Holmes, and Kim Ducat. So we have uh, a panel of experts. Uh, for those of you who are joining us, the uh, uh, Adobe Connect, thanks for uh, getting a hold of us and getting into the conference. We will be sending you an evaluation at the end of the seminar, and we're grateful to have you here, and we'll let the presenters take over. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy to see you. First of all, um, I think Deb mentioned, but I am from <laughs> So I want to make sure everybody's aware of that. I am first because we started doing this with Ferris Connect in 09. One of my students in a senior level class um, designed the Ferris Connect course shell for the program. It has since been modified by another student in a different class. And we took it to Lily, or a couple of my colleagues took it to Lily uh, in, I don't know, a couple years ago. And what I'd like to share with you is how fast, I think this was the most fascinating part to me. We have over 400 students in our program. We have five faculty. Well, four and a half. And so advising them is very, very difficult for us. We have required blocks. Every student has to see us before they are able to register. That creates a bit of a bottleneck. So about, about this time, we also started group advising in addition to individual advising. But this course shell gave us the ability to provide consistent current information to everyone. Now, Mary Holmes, bless her heart, pulled in all of our students registered in HCSA. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Um, and this is what happened once they came in. We had, so this was October 09 where it came in. I know this is really small, and maybe you'd like to look at it afterwards. But we had total user sessions of nearly uh, over 4,600 with an average use of an hour and three quarters. Uh, per weekday, we had uh, 14 per user coming in. We had seven on the weekends. We figured out the least active day and most active hours, least active hours, just for fun. But I remember when it was first loaded, I was watching. We pulled all the students in, and then we opened it up. And in the first, like, two hours, there were 200 hits. And the reason is that when you just go into Ferris Connect, it shows up. So everybody went in. And within the first 24 hours, we had, oh my gosh, like 900 people had gone in in 24 hours. I mean, it was amazing. So we are able to control what they're looking at, which is really, really nice. We have a ton of information out there. And currently, a couple of our faculty are responsible for updating. And I think this is where we're at. So as you can see, it just comes up as a listing. And here it is, HCSA program. Now, the nature of this is that it is not a course shell that shuts down at the end of the term. Mary very graciously educated us and let us understand that we could have a shell that continues forever, which is really nice. So once it's up and running, we were good to go. This is our current look, and as you can see, it's a little um, not totally updated. One of the things we chose to do was to eliminate discussion boards. We wanted this to be static, I think, is what um, was most important to us. We didn't want to have that feedback possibility because it would have been way too crazy to monitor and maintain. So it really is static, and so you'll see that there aren't a lot of the Blackboard options here. But it certainly serves our purpose. Um, I would like to give credit to the original con con concept and design was by Amber Fisher, uh, one of our 2009 graduates. It was updated and modified by Danielle Boyer, another of our graduates. So kudos to them. They worked really hard. Our primary segments here are advising dates, rooms, and times to tell folks where the group advising sessions are. So this is just a, you know, a list of times and dates for them.
Advising information is really a heart. We'll go back to that. We have a segment called First Students Welcome. This was something our students that designed said we needed to have. So they created their own FAQ, so it's totally personalized from a student perspective. We take this out to um, Ferris's page for us, so students can look at the official. Is that better? Um, one of the things we do is indicate new policies. We recently uh, ramped up what it takes to progress within the program, which we cover at group advising, but if you missed it or, heaven forbid, didn't really pay attention, then <laughs> here it is again, so they can look at this at their leisure. Uh, so we put some scholarships here, study abroad, we have a new minor we put in there, so just what's new in the program. We almost always will send out an announcement. Um, we do use this, different things that are going on. And what was our recent one? Fellowships, where some internships might be. That's not used as much. I tend to use it for my students who are doing initiative projects where it's big and they need to involve many people. It might be a volunteer opportunity that's out there for people. And so they send me their information and I'll post a note. And that means 400 plus students are getting that information and have an opportunity to become involved if they wish. I'm not sure if you're familiar with our program, Healthcare Systems Administration is the business side of healthcare. So we don't touch patients. We do everything it takes to keep facilities viable. Uh, we hire people, we train people, we watch the money flow, we are the leaders, the managers, et cetera. And as a result, we have two required internships. And as a student, they always have lots of, in lots of questions about internships. There's a one credit prep course that they take before their first internship, but because it's one hour, if they haven't been listening to group advising or us, they think, oh, one hour course, let me just slot it in. And this kind of helps them remember that um, in this area, we have internships, uh, the new policies, we have rubrics for the projects that we do, we have who is assigned. Uh, part of our load involves following and working with the interns, and we generally know that the week before they start in the new semester uh, because of load issues. Looks like they didn't post that. We didn't have that many this spring. Um, a little information on First Lady's Attic because they aren't always aware that they can get clothing for interviewing and for going on internship. So we're, we're trying to help their pocketbook in that way. And the bottom one is simply internship sites. And please ask questions as I go through. I know I tend to get a little excited. So just slow me down here. Uh, these are comments from students who have been out. And uh, the nature of a lot of these comments, we're just going to cancel that, is a lot about how much dedication is required, about their time management skills, but it's from their experiences, what they're suggesting to new interns coming up. And again, that's just very, very useful information. There's a lot of, hmm, chatter, can I say, that is frequently incorrect. And so this helps to solidify what's really appropriate. We also use this for our student organizations, so the offices are there, the events they're involved in are there, contact information, meeting times, um, t-shirts, sales. <laughs> so we have them provide us the information and we load that in. Um, we have faculty information, and so this is in two parts. The first is simply you know, here's our schedule for the semester, like where I am, when I am, here are my office hours, office contact information. And the other is um, bios, and I think that just goes out to the Ferris website itself. So that if we're current, then that information is available. 
This is the one area that students really like. Well, they like a lot of it, but I would say it's probably the one area that I find we could do a better job on getting that up currently. Because as faculty, we always create our schedule, post it on our doors, and we send copies to everyone. But at the beginning of the term, we need to make time to sit down, PDF that, and get it up. And we want to have a work study do that because that's the nature of you know, what it takes. But we don't always have a trained work study, so then we forget who did it or didn't. We could be a little better. I know, I'm giving away our secrets. But if you're going to put something like that out, um, it's really, currency is pretty important. Wait, you're good, you're, you have a good point there. Um, you point right out to Fair's website to get to know the faculty. So you know that's always current and something you don't have to change. So any links that are out there, use them. Make it easy on yourself so you don't have to change that information constant a lot. Um, here we just have useful links. And so this is all the Ferris links that are most appropriate for our students, government links that are appropriate to the program. So that could be, you know, CDC, it could be the Medicare site, it, you know, a variety of things that are pertinent for us. And I'm sure each program has those. We have organization links that follow the same concept. These are the organizations you want to follow. These are the organizations you'd like to be involved with. You want to read their material. You want to network through their um, accreditation agencies. Another, yeah, this part I don't like, but it's how it works. Um, let's see what we have. So accreditation, we have Baldridge, uh, Commission for Rehab. Uh, ISO is one of our accreditings, Joint Commission. And then just a couple of other areas that are particularly cool. Close current? Yeah. Why is that Explorer? How am I an Explorer? It took off. Oh, yeah. Whew, scare me. <coughs> uh oh, no, nope. I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm a math girl, I don't use Explorer. Um, programs offered by the college. I had somebody in a senior level class. This is lab week, by the way, in case you weren't aware. 70% of a medical record is comprised of lab results which I didn't know. And my students said, wow, wouldn't it be great if we had a program like that? Well, yeah, we do have a program like that. And this is our room. Their lab is right there. So sharing more information about choices, opportunities. Maybe we're not the right fit for them. And so that gives them contact information and a little more uh, background. So that was useful links. It has grown a bit since we started. Uh, we did a brown bag series in spring of 10, so was it two years ago? I am a former CPA. I, I'm the, you know, the finance geek in the area, and I have for years been working with my students to learn more about how to control their own money, how to learn about investing topics and taxes, whatever. So I finally convinced um, a couple other faculty to jump on board, and we designed a series of talks. Um, so we did them at lunch. We had seven or eight, I forget. And not everybody could make it. We had folks come from other colleges to attend. But they said, we really would like to have access to you know, the PowerPoints that you did. Because I took notes, but. So that's why that's there. We probably should do it again. I have taken a lot of that material and, and glommed it into a couple of my courses as a springboard to understanding the healthcare concept. So that's been useful. Um, hazing scholarship <coughs> information this year, graduation. Um, so you can see, as Mary said, these are the links that go out to sources that we don't have, never have to worry about. And you know, just some basic information. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. We have found that particularly, oh, we need to go back to the advising one. That's why we're here, isn't it? Um, let's look at advising information. We put the student um, handbook here. So that just links out to, um, it's like 40 pages or something. 
The group advising guide is available to all our students, and it is like this 20-some-odd checklist of things we cover in every group advising. We are trying to be consistent. We are trying to make sure every student hears the same story, same information, because we know when you go to individual advisors, that doesn't happen. And that's one reason we love group advising. So students can go back and see these were the substitutions for this course that you told us about. Here is the new policy or how I get to more information about that. We currently still have uh, two curriculums going, another reason we love using this show. Um, we have a curriculum that started in 2003. We are seeing the tail end, please, of students using that curriculum. There are a lot of substitutions, replacements of courses, and wiggles that need to happen. So um, that is what, why this is still here. We have, um, let's see what's under there. The check sheet, course descriptions, progression policy. Progression policy for us is aimed at you need to successfully pass these courses before your first internship. You need to pass these courses successfully before you go on your second internship. And that's one thing that students really need to pay attention to, particularly if they're only going to group advising. No questions yet? I have a question. Thank you, Judy. Um, getting help with putting the students in. I think I've had that done before with the TIP students a while ago, but um, are they put in individually? I mean, do they actually have to be physically? Once, each one? that's a great question. Once Mary put in the database worth, we then took over adding individually as they came through um, entry into the program. So our program coordinator would put them in, she passed them on to me, I'd put them in. If there were some gaps, then we always ask in group advising, are you seeing the HCSA program shell? And if not, let us know and we'd get them in right then. I still have that kind of, um, I don't know, authority? Yep, I'll, I'll cover that in my talk, when I talk. Oh, okay, okay. good, okay, thank you. So for us, the original was the huge pullover by Mary and then we've maintained it since then. Uh, 2010 curriculum, new courses, progression policy, uh, semester by semester, which our students never, ever follow. We are not, Kim knows, we are not a block program. Um, so there is a great deal of specific advising uh, that needs to go on. I know a lot of the programs in our college are, oh, your dental hygiene, it's this semester. There are your courses and take two general education courses of your choice. Ours doesn't work that way <laughs> at all. Okay, um, advising forms. This is just a unique uh, something that happened right now related to the 2003 uh, 10 curriculum. Not important for us. Um, this goes out to the listing of, yeah, this wonderful list. This is not what I was thinking, but um, some of the cultural and scientific awareness courses. Down here. Um, this is how to work through my degree. And our students are really getting on top of that. Really? Um, <laughs> We, um, we are trying to encourage our students to use the planner so that ultimately when the software has the capability, we will be able to determine the demand for courses. And I think that's, that's coming, just not quite here yet. Um, the advising guide. So this is general education, transfer equivalencies, this fabulous page that we all know and love. And transfer equivalency, a lot of our students use this, as I'm sure yours probably do too. Um, most of ours use the in-state version, but some are you know, out of state, so of course they use it then. 
This essentially is what we use right now. We found it to be very useful. Our students have been pleased. They bring suggestions to us that we incorporate as appropriate. Let me take a breath and... <laughs> so they use this more than they use, say, your website. Oh, absolutely. Because okay. the website's hard to find all the information, or what's the feedback you get from students? They can find everything here, and they're already, they're already in their courses, so yeah. it's already accessible. What they can't do is use this to avoid going to advising. However, I have off-campus students, and you know, we just work around it, as do we all. Other questions, comments? This is probably broader than what you're thinking. We considered doing it as an individual advisor, but this is just so much easier for us. Every advisor is in this. It's very easy to add. We just go to Gradebook and enroll a student. If any of you would like to have access to this, uh, just leave your sign-in ID with Deb, and she'll get that to me. So you can like poke around and, and see what we have, and see if you might be able to borrow anything. So all of the faculty advisors are in this shell and can see it. Do they all have administrative rights to update? I do because my students started it, but we have turned over official responsibility to uh, two of our newer faculty to give them um, building experience. And I'm just kind of like background. Otherwise, it would be like Wikipedia. Anybody could go in and change something. So you have to be careful to keep it standardized. But everyone can see it. Yeah. So if anyone wants to make a change, they contact you us. and you guys talk about it and decide if you're going to make the change or not? Mm -hmm. OK, that makes sense. Yeah. We would never have individual advising pages. And I know that was the original concept here. And maybe it would work for you. But it certainly would not work for our program due to, I don't know, maybe the volume or, I don't know, it just, this just works for us. So, other questions? I'm like a professor, I talk too much, don't I? Well, thank you for your time. And I, please email me if you have comments, questions, thoughts for improvement, because it's always possible. Okay, so how do we make this happen? That's what I'm going to go over. How can we do this for you to make this easy for you? So the first thing that you want to do, now we are in that transition process from um, Blackboard Vista version to Blackboard 9.1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you with that transition process because when you start to build, you're going to want to build in the new Blackboard Learn. First thing you want to do is you're going to log into MyFSU and we need to get you a shell set up. Okay, and the pro there's a process to get a shell set up. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into Faculty Services. This is your step one. And you're going to go down to your Ferris Connect help channel because recall that even though we're changing um, the Vista product to Blackboard Learn, the process is still going to be called Ferris Connect. We, you know, long ago we had a student um, help us design a name for that, so we're going to keep this. So the new Blackboard Learn is also going to be called Ferris Connect. So you're going to go down to the Ferris Connect non-integrated course request form. Now why you're going to do that is because remember when Marcy talked about that you want this to be a form and a class, a shell that stays out there longer than one semester, it has to be non-integrated for that to happen. Okay, so you're going to go to Faculty Services after you log in. You're going to go to this Ferris Connect Help Channel and down to Ferris Connect Non-Integrated Course Request Form. Click on that. That will come up. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so first thing you're going to start out is with your name. Do mine. Your Novell ID or my FSU ID is the same thing. Put your phone number because I'm probably going to need to call you. Okay, and then you want to do a course title. 
Now make it relevant to what you're what you really wanted to do so that the students know what you're doing. Okay? So I'm gonna call this one um, advising for teacher education. That's fine. <laughs> you can use that too. If someone else has that same name, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Sele and then you're going to select the LMS, okay? And remember, um, you want to select for Blackboard Learn. Make sure that you've been through the training because there will be a little bit of a, a hiccup there if you haven't been through the training and you haven't been checked off to actually use a course shell. You're going to want to choose Blackboard Learn because otherwise you're going to have to migrate it over. So you, if you're starting out new, you might as well start out and learn. But remember, you're going to have to have went through the training to actually get to that point. Um, description of the course, um, you can put advising, you know, for program, whatever you're going to do. Or maybe it's going to be, maybe you're just going to set this up not for the whole program, maybe you're going to set this up just for your own advisees. Okay, this is the big question. How will the students be enrolled into the course? If you only have four, five, ten, fifteen students, you can do the enrollment. We'll set that up so that you have Instructor Plus ID and that you will be able to do the enrollment. But if you're talking 400 students, you probably don't want to do it yourself or even pay a work study to do it. I can make that easier for you. So what you want to do is you want to say Instructor Rolled, say no, okay, and then click the Send button. Once you do that, it's going to pop up another form. If you said yes, you're done, you're going to, you're going to get a comment section and that's it. But this is going to um, pop you up another form. What I have access to is if you're going to put majors in, like um, when Kimberly set up hers, she could give me all the major codes for CJ. And those are the four digit codes. If you can give me that, you can put that in there and I can run a web focus report that pulls all of those students and I can drop them into that shell for you. Okay. The other way to do that is if you have specific classes that your students have to take. Let's say um, in teacher education they have to take like Education 206 and you know all of the students have to take that. I can pull those, that CRN and I can put all the students in by that way. But you have to give me some way to pull those students. You can't just call me up and say well I want all, um, you know like, like in Marcy's case, HTSA students. I don't know what that means. I've got to have specific codes specific to the student and that each student has that. So if you can say HCSA, HCSS, whatever those codes are, then I can put in there. Or in the case of Kimberly's, the CJ ones. And if you want pre-CJ students too, there has to be some kind of code designated for me to get that. So I have to have a code or the sections, one or the other. Mary? Yes. I think um, when I uh, requested my shell in Blackboard for the TIP students, mm -hmm. I may have put that I would put them in because I was thinking of my advisees okay. at first. Okay. But then I realized that in the fall, when I have my FSUS class, those are my advisees. So I really don't need a separate shell for them. Okay. So is there any way that I can change that and, and actually put the TIP scholars in there? Yes, yes. And have a place, so would I get in touch with you to make Yes, that? yeah, just send me an email. And, but let me know, like, how are those TIP students designated? Is there some code? We have focus report that, um, groups them together. Okay, so your web focus report um, may be different than my web focus. What I'm going to need is I'm going to need IDs. So I might have to have a programmer rewrite that for me. So we'll have to talk through those. So if you have, if you have a web focus report, sometimes it'll work for me and sometimes it won't. Okay, and, and sometimes if you have it, it's easier to have a programmer say, oh, I can do this and this for you and whip it out for you. Just remember that takes a little bit of time because we have to go through a program and, and so if you're going to set this up and think it's going to be available the next day, that's usually not the case. That takes some time to work through those processes. But it can be done, okay? It can be done and we'll, we'll get you through that process. The other thing is, okay, so I load all these um, uh, courses up. I'll, I'll use pharmacy for example. There are 650 students I put into a course, okay? What you need to decide is what do you do the next year? Okay, so next year I've got 650, now probably maybe 100 of those graduated and you maybe have 100 new ones come in. Think through that process. What course are they in? How can Mary get them in? And then do you want the old students out? 
I think in Marcy's case, I wish Marcy was still here, I think in Marcy's case, she wanted them in there for a while so that they could do internships and maybe look back and stuff. Yeah, that's what you're seeing too? You're still doing that. Okay, so that kind of stuff. So think through that process, how we're going to do that. Um, usually, it's going to be manual deletes. So you're going to have to manually go in and delete them if you want them out of the shell, okay? But if you want that additional 100 in, usually I can help you out with that, as long as you can give me some information to figure out who those students are, okay? Any questions on that? Does that make pretty good sense? Okay, so when we manually delete, do you give us some kind of uh, code that we can go in and do it? Yeah, I'll help you with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to do it one by one, but I will help you through that process, okay? Okay, so you fill this form out, you put in the CRNs. Um, I'm going to say that I have specific CRNs. It's 10128. I'm just making these up. 10129. Okay, those, all of those students in there. You can write a little comment. Um, whatever, the comment can be anything that's going to help me figure this out for you. Okay, and, you don't, and maybe you don't need to write a comment. It's pretty self explanatory. But if there's something special you want to do, please write that to me. And then I get this form. And then you click the send button. And then off it goes. It says it'll be created. And you will receive an email notifying you when it's done. Give that a few days. Okay? That, that's another thing that, you know, this is a manual process at this point. So we've got to go out and create those, try to load the students up for you. And that's the other thing, too. Um, make a note in there. What I try to do before I load the students is usually what I'll do is I'll get this form and I go in and I'll make the shell for you. Once your shell is created, then you can start building. And then you can tell me, okay, I'm ready to load those students in. Usually I won't load the students in until you tell me you're ready because otherwise you're going to have to go in. In and and say you know I don't want them to have access to it and you know deny them access um, but like Marcy said you know she wanted it in at a certain time so that she could watch the hits and everything so she said okay I'm ready I loaded them in once I load the students in it shows up on their my blackboard page okay and and that's either whether we're talking Vista or blackboard learn Okay, so you filled out the form. What do you do now? How many people are going to be bringing over? Are, are you guys all new developing or are you bringing over um, something from uh, Vista? Is anybody copying anything over? No, nobody's copying. So you're all new. Okay, good. Because, you know, there's some certain things to go through for copying and I was going to go through that, um, but we won't do that. All right, so I'm going to go out to the Fairs Connect page just to show you if, you're t if you talk to your friends and um, somebody else wants to actually bring something over. Out on the Fairs Connect page, if you're going to bring something over from Vista, you're, what you're going to want to do, we have this Fairs Connect page. It's www.fairs.edu slash Fairs Connect. Gives you all the, the different items for what's going on with training, face checkoffs. There's lots of stuff out here, lots of troubleshooting tips. Um, so this is just a plug for this page. But then when you do the more, it'll ta help you migrate, if you're going to migrate, um, from Vista course to a Learn course. And it just walks you through those steps. But since you guys are all doing new stuff, you don't need to do it. But if you know somebody that has an advising shell and wants to do that, it walks them through the steps. Um, pros and cons of bringing this over. What I would tell you, if you've got friends that are going to um, um, want to take an advising shell and bring it over to learn, I would say don't copy. You know what? Because anything that you, any problems that you had are going to come over. So I would say the best ways to build new, you guys are sitting in a perfect position because you're going to build from new. Okay? All right. Um, questions so far? Um, one, other, one other thing I want to discuss, though, is um, Eunice um, Merwin Beck had set up a, she's got a new advising shell as well out there, and she just won an award through the Michigan Blackboard Users Group on that setup. And so she said that she's really willing to help anybody, too, if they're interested in setting this up, you know, amongst, you know, the three of us, and we have Eunice as well that would be interested in helping us if you need some help in setting those up. Okay, any questions or anything for me? Everything straightforward? Okay. Okay, I'm Kim Ducat, and I am the new CJ professional advisor as of January of this year. So everything uh, is new for me, as I'm sure it is for all of you, in regards to Blackboard. One of the first responsibilities that I was given 
was to take the Blackboard training class and start an advising shell for our students. So I'd just like to point out that I am by no means a guru. Um, I'll be glad to direct you to Eunice for that one because I will not be getting any awards on mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to slowly walk you through the steps that I took in order to create my shell and the things that I've uploaded so far, which it's still in the development stages. Um, and, and I'm hoping that over before the end of the next semester, it'll be really where I want it to be at. We do have uh, our internships this summer. We have over 400 interns and so this site has been really helpful for us to get all that information out to our interns instead of taking 400 phone calls we can just post all of their packets and information on the site so for the ladies that are joining us via the conference phone uh, I am going to be standing about 10 feet away from the polycom for the majority of this presentation if you can't hear me please feel free to take your phone off of speaker and just say, hey, can you speak up, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and log into my account so you can see what my Blackboard advising shell looks like. Uh, like I said, I went ahead and did the Blackboard training session, which, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, if anyone knows, there are two phases, and I only did phase one because phase two is if you're going to teach solely online. Um, and and I, I don't need it for that purpose, so I've only been through the first phase. And I am really familiar with Ferris Connect as well from a student's point of view and from an instructor since I am an FSUS instructor. And I will tell you that it is, in my opinion right now, being a newbie, it is very different, um, but also very advantageous. And I also want to point out that as of fall of this year, Ferris Connect is going away and everybody will be required to use Blackboard. And on that note, uh, since it was a new shell for me, you know, I did not have to transfer anything over so there weren't any of those glitches where if you currently do have a shell for your students and there's a lot of information in there, if you guys, Mary's advising shell was huge. There's a lot of information in there that she's not going to want to lose or reduplicate. So therefore, if I were her, I'd probably want to transfer that information into Blackboard. However, just keep in mind, there are going to be some glitches because there are what I'm going to call predetermined defaults. So it is either easier to start fresh, but you'll see that mine is in no way as, uh, as large as hers as far as information goes, as it is still a beginning development shell. Okay. So from your MyFSU, it's going to be the learn link up to the top near your Ferris Connect. Okay, so this is my login, and right now all of my CJ students, when they log into their Blackboard, they see advising information for criminal justice students. Now I did go in with a lot of help from Mary <laughs> to set this up. Uh, it was a development shell and then I worked on it for about two, three weeks and once I was ready to go live with it, I contacted Mary and she put my students in for me. Okay, so they go into advising information for criminal justice and the first thing that they see is a picture of our director, Dr. Reifer, and I also manage the criminal justice website. So since I've started, I've went in and updated faculty and staff information, and I like to put that uh, on the home page just so it's easily accessible for them. And I do actually have to update it again as things have actually changed in the last three months. And this is not a hot link, so they can't just click on these names and go to their pages. They will, they will have to go to our CJ homepage in order to link on, to click on their names to get their bios. So, and I have specifically designed this shell for just CJ students, because you'll notice when I pull up some of these documents, it references specific numbers, offices, faculty, etc. So that's what I really like about it, because it's specifically designed for these students. And when I have them on the phone, I'm more of a visual person, so I can direct them to this site and have them pull up a document so they're looking at the exact same thing that I am. Okay, so first I'm going to go into the CJ advising information. And here I've got a few different shells, uh, or excuse me, folders. There's frequently asked questions, the advising guide, 
which Marcy showed us that web page through Ferris, which I know we all love. Uh, our College of Education and Human Services homepage, and then again the financial aid process because I know everybody's dealing with that new SAP uh, change for students right now with financial aid. So first I'm going to go into the financial, or excuse me, frequently asked questions. And this again, I pretty much designed most of these files specifically for our students and these are questions that I most typically get. So for example, they'll say what is a quality point when the student's going to determine their GPA or figure out how well they need to do in future semesters in order to uh, you know, stay in the program or graduate with honors, etc. So I went ahead, I grabbed a document that we currently existing that explains the quality point and I just put in an example at the bottom to say did to determine the number of quality points received for a class, refer to the above chart. Take the number of credits the class is worth and find the grade you received. The number that intersects the two is your quality point. So that gives the student a visual and they can be looking at something while I'm explaining it to them so it makes more sense. Now the thing with Blackboard is that it doesn't have a back button. So if you right click, then you can go back. Okay, another way to do that is just to follow oh, the breadcrumbs yeah. up there. Oh, okay. okay. And the breadcrumbs. Yep, that'll work for you to go back. Yep. Okay, so some of the documents that I've put up here, uh, information on academic probation, appealing your grade. Now, for our program, there's uh, career services mock interviews that they have to do, so I put the rubric up there. Uh, we've got our website for College of Education and Human Services, our grading system, Internet registration, this is another document I put together. Just by using Snagit, I went in and took pictures of the site and then put steps in there on how to register via the Internet. Because I still get students that come in as sophomores, you know, if they've been in the JLC program and they have no idea how to register themselves. And I can print this out for them or they can, and it's just step by step for them. And as you can see at the bottom there in the footer, it says, you know, criminal justice programs. And I dated it so we can see when it was last updated. Could I ask Mary a question real quick? Oh, yeah. Mary, um, I know that I thought just one tab was content, but obviously more of her tabs are content tabs. So how do you do that? You can just name them anything. You know how she's got them named on the side there? Yeah. You can make them more, you can make more content tabs. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, we, it's different than like the start here and then you have your contents yeah. and different. But you can just make those tabs on the side and you just go up there by that plus sign up there in the corner. And just make more content? Make more, yes, make tabs. more content. Okay. Okay, and you can name them like she did, whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and right now, since the internships are a huge thing for us, I did put internship information in here, which eventually we'll get on our website as well. Uh, initially, they just see all the documents that everyone gets in their internship packet, and then I've broken it out by tracks. We have three different tracks, our law enforcement, corrections, and generalist. So initially, they'll see all the documentation that they need for law enforcement, and then under that is the corrections and generalist. So if they lose their packet or have questions or they can go right in here and print it off instead of making another trip to campus or you know having us email it to them or whatnot. And then I also went into Marcy's advising shell because I am a graduate of the HCSA program so I still have access to that and I've been trying to get ideas from her for what kind of information will be would be valuable for our students and after that I did go in and create a graduation information tab, which I've, I've only put the link in there so far for commencement information, but eventually, you know, a, as I learn more and get more involved with the position, I'm sure that there'll be a lot more information in there. So, and then I also decided to keep the Blackboard help, the FSU tech support, these items, those links come with your shell, and I just decided to keep them in there. And again, just like Marcy, decided to keep this as a static shell so students can't email me um, or do a discussion board or anything like that. This is specifically uh, a resource site for them. Any questions so far? No? How about the ladies on our conference? Anything? Well, they can unmute.
I wonder, why do you have, what are the tool and help uh, I can bars? Cl I can click on those for you. And I think this is just to help you in building your Blackboard page. Again, the, the tools and the help are both uh, links that are provided for every shell. So this is the tools, and I'll go click on the help. And, and you can turn that off if you don't want that on, you know. And also, we're probably seeing her page, not what the students would see. Correct. 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 And then the help link just takes you to a help site for Blackboard. This, the stuff that she's saying that is on Maker Layer, that's just a way to start out with, we're trying to give you a template to, to help you move down that process. But you can turn anything off that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So uh, in conclusion, I guess for me as a newbie and with almost 700 students, I'm really going to utilize this in order to get information out to my students. Whenever we have announcements, I put it in Blackboard. Anything new from the faculty that they want to make sure that the students see, I put it out there. So it, it's been a wonderful tool for me. So if there are no more questions, I think I'm all done. We good? OK, well, thank you. We do have an evaluation for this workshop. And also, for those of you who have been participating in the homework or the deliverables, I have that handout for you. <laughs> and for Carrie and uh, Catherine, we can send you that electronically so you can fill out the evaluation and also get the homework <coughs> portion. And um, just as a reminder, if you have not participated in the deliverable homework, that uh, homework goes towards being able to go to a future advising conference and I can share more information with you if you're unfamiliar with this. So thank you very much for attending one of our seminars or today especially.